<laughs> and we are live. We are live. Bienvenidos and and welcome back, familia, to another awesome uh, podcast. The, I am Leonardo Torres. <laughs> I'm Erika Ayala. And together we are, other than awesome, Leon Erika. <laughs> and we'd like to welcome you to another awesome podcast, the uh, to the Tower of Torres, the podcast that is dedicated to spreading love and um, the spreading the love that comes from above. And familia, today we continue with our very serious topic uh, on the Holy Spirit uh, we had a couple of things that we were we we a little a l- couple of walls that we ran into on our on our last uh, talk with Pastor Chad. Shout out to P- Pastor Chad for all the wonderful for the wonderful conversation that we had. Um, and I just wanted to quickly remind you, Familia. Well, be- before before I get to the reminder, I just wanted to remind you first that uh, this today's episode is brought to you by Boiling Point, who have pushed their release date. From June 28th to the 25th, which means that we get to listen to their delicious music <laughs> just a few days earlier this time. And uh, for more information on that, please contact Boiling Point uh, at uh, boilingpointband.com at their website. Um, and then also a special thanks to our YouTube members um, and our Patreon partners who, without them, without your love and support, this topics like this would not be uh, possible. And I really briefly wanted to talk to you all about what happened in the last episode, uh, we had a couple of people who did not agree, and that that was kind of expected. Uh, we expected some people to to we expected this topic to so somewhat hit a couple of soft spots, and that wasn't our intention, Familia. The intention of these videos is always to be united. It's to bring us closer together. I, I'm I, I want to remind you that I started as a non Christian on this channel, mm-hmm. and I was open to hearing everything. I didn't shut anything down. I didn't make fun of you all. I didn't. I didn't get offended, even though there were a lot of offensive things said to me. In the same way, familia, I just want you to um, to uh, please just listen to what's being said. You don't have to agree or disagree. The key is to just understand, is to understand one another, to understand where we're coming from. Sometimes we we don't understand someone and we, it's very easy to reject that, that which we don't understand or easy to reject that which we don't uh, agree with. But again, this is about being united and being coming together as one because that was, that was Christ's uh, prayer for all of us, for all of us to come together. And that doesn't mean that we're going to agree on everything. It doesn't have to mean that, but, but we need to respect one another. And, and, and the key to all of this is to understand one another just, just a little bit more. So what we're doing here is we're bringing all these guests. We're hearing everything. We're just listening. So if you're in familia, let me get an I'm in, in the live chat. And, uh, and just please listen attentively. If you disagree with something, it's okay. We can have that conversation at another time. Please keep the live chat clean. If you have a question, we wanna start off with four question marks in the beginning, followed by your question, and then, <laughs> and then, another, um, and then another four question marks. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Chad said, I rejected that T-shirt. <laughs> I still haven't received my Texas T-shirt from a uh, pastor who said he was going to send me a Texas T-shirt a really long time ago, but that's okay. I could pick it up when I when I come visit you, Pastor Chad. Um, so so yeah, please keep keep it all respectful. Keep it um, keep it clean, okay? Um, if, if something is said, you can disagree. That's fine. I don't have a problem with you all disagreeing, but remember that we're we're brought here um, to be united, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna bring in a very special guest. Uh, I, I've met him on Instagram. I, I asked you all if uh, I, if you can please refer me to a pastor who would be interested in, in touching on this topic. And this brave brave soul came and said, "I'll talk about it." <laughs> uh, this is uh, Pastor Tony Gowdy. Uh, he is husband to Becky, father to N- Nalani and Nia Maya. Hi. Nalani oh, and, me, and Nia, yeah, beautiful names. He's a lifelong resident of Miami, Florida in Key Biscayne, uh, youth coach for 24 years, next generation pastor at Key Biscayne Community Church. And I am excited to have him on, on board. Um, please ha- join me in welcoming Pastor Tony Gowdy. Pastor, welcome. Hi. Hi, how are you guys? Thank <laughs> you guys so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. We're we're excited to have you. Thank you for for joining us on this real important conversation. Really, really important conversation. Um, I know that uh, you and I were just briefly talking 
before we got started and yeah. you said that this is one of the topics that that is the least talked about right um i started off the last podcast with this definition that i found on on just the google uh, dictionary and it says this is the third person of the trinity god as spiritual as spiritually active in the world and i wanted to start with this just to get your opinion as a guy pastor chad's opinion on whether or not um this is a good starting point for uh, to define um the holy spirit yeah i i i think um honestly speaking if you want to try to def like box in <laughs> uh, what the Holy Spirit is, right? Into like a small Google definition or what, whatever, wherever you're getting definitions from. Um, this is not a bad place to start. Yes, the Holy Spirit is the third person of Trinity, was there um, before the creation, was there at the creation. And um, when Christ died and, and, and he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within those who uh, believe in Christ and, and to walk with them, to guide them, to speak to them. Uh, like Pastor Chad said, to re to remind us of who we are in Christ, um, and something you said um, on the lead-in about uh, the disagreement. The truth is that the church has been disagreeing since the church began, right? Yeah. Um, it was even Paul on his ministry who who disagreed with allowing John Mark to continue with him, mm -hmm. right? He 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 refused to let Mark go, and then him and Silas ended up. Uh, taking their ministry one direction and John Mark took his ministry in another. And, and lo and behold, at the end of Paul's life, he actually calls for Mark, right? He says he, he calls for Mark and, and Mark writes one of the gospels. One of the four gospel books was written by someone who Paul disagreed with so much that he decided to um, separate from him. And I think that's the sad part. One of the sad parts in our church is that we get caught up on theology and doctrine and, and interpretation of, of certain things. And a lot of the things that we're caught up on, they're not salvational issues. They're secondary mm. issues. Mm. Yeah. And, but we'll put walls up and, and we'll judge others. And even myself, I was, I, I got a chance to listen to a little bit of about an hour's worth of your uh, Wednesday um, interview. And there were some things that, you know, I didn't fully agree with. There were some mm. things that I disagreed with and I had to, I had, I found the Holy spirit checking my heart, like, in, in the middle of a disagreement, <laughs> yeah. right? And, and there's this other this other YouTuber, his name is Ruslan, and he says, look, I mm -hmm. hope you don't agree with me on everything. The truth is like, if we're getting all of our doctrine and theology from a person that's here on earth, mm -hmm. we're gonna be wrong about some stuff because no one is right 100% in their theology and their doctrine. Yeah, I'm gonna push back a little bit if that's okay. I'm gonna do some healthy yeah. pushback. And Familia, for those of you who are are are, uh, are following along, please do not take my 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 pushback as this is what Leonardo thinks. Okay, this is just healthy pushback, putting myself in a in a in a, in a situation or putting myself in a position to sort of question what is being said, uh, and it's done in a healthy way. I'm not I'm not pushing back. So you just recently you you just said that as long as we're getting theology or theology from another man, it could be questionable, right? Does that include the gospels? Well, I mean the 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 gospels have been written by man, you know, breathed to life, like God wrote them through us, right? But interpretations down the road, you just have to be willing to do the research. You have to be willing to go back like Chad did and say, hey, what was what what are the what was the Greek translation? What's the origin of this word? How did the word get to the place where it is now? And obviously, interpretations of scripture. I mean, there's people that have justified slavery off of scripture. There's people that justify just about anything based off of what's been written in the Bible. And us as people. We have a we do a really good job of, of twisting God's words to mean what we want them to mean. Mm -hmm. Right. So w when we approach the word of God, we don't approach it as God reveal to me your truth. We approach it with God. This is my truth. Let me find it in your word. Right. And um, I think that that's a dangerous game that we play as Christians is that we come to God with an agenda and we're looking for the agenda to be affirmed by his words. Right. And if that's if that's your starting point, you'll find the affirmation you need to justify anything. 
Right. You know, I made the mistake when I was non-Christian, when I was an atheist even, uh, of of thinking, of questioning deeply, like, that these these scriptures were written by a man. And how are we to trust that it was written word for word? And for me, just inspiration inspiration wasn't enough, to be absolutely clear. But as I started to read, it, read them, I realized that they're not just like like someone sitting in a room and then being divinely inspired which is what i thought it was i just thought somebody was sitting in a room writing these books and it was just coming in you know and 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 everything uh, was written but i started to realize that these were these were like journals almost that or and letters that were being written to to different cities and different people uh but mostly it was like journals taking account of what what was said by by christ um and what was what they what they witnessed right um and so yeah, that, that's one of the mistakes that I that I realized that I made with regards to scripture. So when when we were when I was talking to Pastor Chad, what was what was one of the things that that uh, st you struggled well, with? Well, well, not 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 so much struggle, but to me, like when he was talking about, and this may I'm I'm not I'm not discrediting the way he was brought up in in, in his Christian walk, but for me, the Holy Spirit was never spoken to in a manner of, oh, he's the one that's here to just like convict you and make you feel bad about yourself. I, I, I never experienced that kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit. With me, um, I grew up in a Catholic home, right? Mm -hmm. Which um, was uh, religion more than it was a relationship with God. It was what I had to do and this is why I had to do it. So like everything that I did good was attached to an obvious blessing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's very important as Christians. Like we need to my favorite story in all of Scripture is um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego when Nebuchadnezzar erects the statue and he makes everyone bow to the mm -hmm. statue. And they say, look, um, we have a God that can save us and we have a God that will save us. And most of us, we stop there. If we're mm -hmm. if we if we have someone in the hospital, um, you know, I, I, I know you can, God, and I know you will. But we don't finish their thought. And their thought was finished with, but even if he doesn't, we're mm -hmm. not going to bow down. So we as Christians need to have an even if faith, right? So like, mm -hmm. um, even if God doesn't give you the blessing that you want, even if uh, you tithe all your money and you don't get it back, even if the only thing God gives you is salvation, you can't ever hope to get anything more than that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so mm -hmm. my pushback was like, my when I started to build relationship with Christ and with the, and, and allow his Holy Spirit to actually direct me. Right. Um, I never heard of the Holy Spirit in any kind of negative connotation. The only negative things I heard were certain Christian groups that thought that the gifts of the spirit were dead in the book mm -hmm. of Acts. Right. They, th they didn't think the gifts of the spirit were for today, which I which I disagree with. But again, we can disagree and still love each other. I'm, I'm, right, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be wrong about some stuff here. And if there's people here that want to lovingly rebuke me, I'm cool with that. I'm not above yeah. a loving right. rebuke, right? But yeah. a rebuke in judgment and a rebuke uh, to like condemn is something totally different. Mm. Right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love, I love where this conversation is going already. Um, um, where do you think? How do you think that um, the Holy Spirit is present in in I, I I don't know this world this realm this this life like how does the how does the Holy Spirit uh, present itself here what what position is it in where where is it how is it from your from your hmm. opinion or your well, I mean, point of view for sure when you take the fruit of the Spirit right you you can take those nine those nine attributes that are attributed to the spirit, which are love, joy, uh, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, um, self-control. Like th these are, these are real things we can look at and we can say, okay, here's evidence. Right. And then there's gifts of the spirit. Like there's people, I, I personally have never spoken in tongues, but I absolutely believe that it's a gift for today. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that I, I've mm -hmm. never, I've never healed anyone with my hands, but, it was Jesus that said, you've seen the works I've done and you're going to do works even greater than these. Right. So right. if it and, and we live in a red letter Christianity society where like if Jesus said it, we we, we, we want to put like extra emphasis on it. The truth is Jesus said all of it. Right. <laughs> the whole Bible is written by God. It's not like the Bible was written by God and like and like 
some books are less important than others, right? But we we choose to like emphasize certain things. And I believe that when you when you look at evidence of the Holy Spirit in our world today, um, I mean, the fact that we even love one another, like the, the scripture says that we love because he first loved, like the fact that when we're doing something wrong, that we know it's wrong, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us in those moments, giving us sort of like exit ramps, like visualize yourself on a highway and you're driving towards sin. And on the on, on the journey to sin, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit gives you exit one, exit two, exit three, exit four. And I, I feel like the Holy Spirit is evident when you look at um, people that have faith that on paper should have no faith, that have lost everything, that have, you know, um, don't have their parents, didn't grow up with parents or or suffered tragedy or and, and, and yet through all of that. It's like when you look at a slab of concrete and you see like a flower growing up out of it. How yes. did that happen? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. How did that happen? And I think the only explanation that 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 satisfies me is through the divine mercy, the divine grace of God and, and through his Holy Spirit. So yeah. I think it's I think it's and, and again, let me be clear. Like with any gift, right? Um, there's people who take advantage of gifts. Of course. Right? So like I do believe that in the gift of tongues, but I believe that there's many who are using the gift of tongues to not glorify Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so many things to unpack there. Um, yeah. One, one of the things... So from your perspective, what I'm seeing is what I'm, what I'm seeing is that as we're going towards sin, the Holy Spirit is is presenting to us opportunities for us to start to walk away and lead us towards something, something good. Right. What happens when we arrive at the sin? Hmm. If we didn't exit. So then in that in that case, what role does the Holy Spirit play because I, I I know you disagreed with Pastor Chad, but I had a I had an experience where where it, with the Catholic Church that I grew up where everything was like guilt, 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 well, guilt. You, you, yeah. And the whole and the Holy Spirit it was there to watch you and and that's that was repeated multiple times. Hey, don't forget that God is watching everything you're doing. So you, you feel like like you have well you, you know you're like constantly sort of like on on fight or flight mode <laughs> almost it seems right yeah so so what happens when you don't pay attention to the exit signs and you arrive at sin and you find yourself there at sin, then what role does the Holy Spirit play? I absolutely agree with Pastor Chad where the Holy Spirit's not there to condemn you, right? Mm -hmm. um, like many would, would argue that he is. He's there to judge you. And I heard this said long ago, and uh, I'm going to say the man who said it, who I heard it from, and many may not, but like the man fell at the end of his life. It's Ravi Zacchaeus. And but that still doesn't discredit the things he said and whether or not they're true. And he said that God is not saying, do these things or I will destroy you. Right. What God right. is saying is do these things or you will destroy yourself. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Catholic version is do these things or else the judgment of God and his wrath is just going to crush you. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that's what. I don't think that's what scripture says. I don't think that's right. what God is saying. I'm saying it's, it's like a parent telling their child to look both ways before they cross the street. It's not because the parent's going to run the kid over. <laughs> it's, it's because uh, another car is going to run the kid over. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like a lot of times we lose sight. And, and the truth is this. I'm married. You're married. Right. And if my and I love my wife. But if there ever came a time where my wife thought that I was only married to her because I had to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Imagine only going to church because you have to go mm -hmm. because not because you want to go. Imagine <laughs> imagine what Jesus feels like when you enter the church saying, man, I don't want to be here, but I have to. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's after our actions as much as he's after our desires and our heart. And he wants us to want to be with him. And I think as far as salvation goes, there's evidences of that. You you. Like you can't say that you're a new creation and have the same relationships with sin. So right. getting back to your original question, what happens when you don't get off? What happens when you arrive at sin, right? What is the Holy Spirit's role there? Mm -hmm. I think his role there is to lead you back to repentance, 
to, to, to lead you back to the cross and to not judge you, but to love you through that. Mm. And I think that a lot of people get mixed up because let's say I'm, let's say I'm preaching against a particular sin and they're the ones living in that sin. They take so much offense to it because they think I'm attacking them, but I'm, I'm, I'm not, first of all, I believe all sin is created on equal. I believe sin separates us from God. So I may, I may struggle with a certain sin that's more widely accepted than the sin you're struggling with, but that doesn't mean that I'm any better or worse than you are. You right. know, we're all in the same condition. We're either bought and saved and the blood of Christ has washed us or it hasn't. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm usually very careful about black and white statements, but yeah. I, I, I agree with that. Um, I feel like a lot of people overcomplicate, you know, and, and want to say, well, you know, sure, I'm lying to my boss about X, Y, Z, or I'm stealing money from from the register, for example. But at least I'm not murdering someone, you know, at least I'm not, you know, and it's a, but you're in it, right? You're still you're still in that bo in the sin box, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, Roxana uh, Budimir, uh, Buna Dominiata Roxana says, what is... What is it to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? What does that mean? Well, I, again, I think it depends who you ask, right? So <laughs> right. Uh, I know many, many in, in, in Pentecostal churches that believe that, um, that unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, which means that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and now you speak in tongues, then you're, you're actually not saved. Unless you speak in tongues, unless you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are not saved. For me, what does it mean? Uh, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit is simply, you know, once you accept Jesus and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you and direct you and inform you and comfort you and, 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 and all of those things, I think that's the true meaning of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is when, when, you, when you pivot, when you repent, when you turn from your old life and you start walking toward the cross, um, when you get off the narrow path and on, I mean, when you get off the broad path and onto the narrow path, I think that's evidence that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. Now, the language is interesting to me because it's starting, it's it's somewhat sounds like what we're saying is that the Holy Spirit only comes to those who have repented or only comes to those mm. who have, uh, you know, accepted Christ. Is it is it present for someone who hasn't yet approached Christ? Is it around? Is it? Is it in? Mm. Is it is it pushing? Is it nudging? Or is it just coming to those who say, I, I believe in Christ? Yeah, I think that's another one of those. You're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And even the question you just asked pushes another button that is a, a, an extremely debated topic amongst Christians, right? Which is um, predestination. Or, or do we even have a say in this? Do we even do we even get to choose God or he's already chosen? And you have the Calvinistic view and you have the Armenian view. And um, I believe that God is, like you said on Wednesday, he's everywhere all the time. He, he, I, I believe, I, I don't know if I heard you right, but you said, what happens when, when, when he's not there or something like that? Do you remember that? Yeah, there was a, it's because the, again, the language that some people say God isn't here or where was God when this was happening to me. And, <laughs> and, and, we, and, and so it's this thing where we, where we, Feel like God is not present, but from well, what I, I've observed is is that sometimes I'm not present. Sometimes I'm 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 thinking too much in the future, or I'm dwelling too much on the past that I that I don't see that God or His presence is here and now because I'm so distracted by something. I'm pulled away from I, I, the here and now. I agree with you. I don't think it's God that moves. I think it's us that that move. And um, many people, it's easy to say, "Hey, why do these bad things happen to good people?" Right. Mm -hmm. But the real question we need to be asking as Christians is how does this good thing, salvation, happen to bad people like us, like everybody? Mm -hmm. Like no one deserves salvation. If if we can earn heaven, right, then what would be the point of the cross? There there would be no point. They would God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit would just be up in heaven and wait for the good guys and the good girls to get up there. And the bad ones wouldn't. So um I think that. Once you've accepted Jesus in your heart, 
everything changes. And no, like some people, <laughs> some people, some people talk about like, oh, I had this vision or I heard Jesus audibly. I've never heard the voice of God audibly in my ear, but I've felt the voice of God in my spirit. Right. Ooh, yeah. I think that would that would be most people's um, yeah. most people's situation. But I think once you do that uh, and there's there's evidence that proves that. And then that then once you're saved, you guys talked about this. There's nothing that can pluck you from the hands of God. Mm. Once you're saved, once saved, always saved. I believe that with my whole heart. OK, I. I want to push back a little bit, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, because some people might take that to mean that, okay, I'm saved now. I accepted him. So now I'm free to hmm. do whatever and it'll yeah. be forgiven because, yeah. you know, because I can go to church on Sunday and just ask for forgiveness and start all over again. Right. No disrespect to anyone. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just present, bringing everything into in, the light so we can sh mm -hmm. shine some light into it. I, I, I actually agree with you. I, I think that the better question would not be once you're saved, are you always saved? I, I think that that question answers itself when you read scripture. I think the real question that we need to be asking and willing to offend people is, were you ever saved to begin with? Mm. You know, it, 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 it's like people that go to that are, that are in a courtroom that are testifying and they put their hand on the Bible and they, they promise and they swear they're going to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But you and I and everyone who's ever been alive long enough know that many of those people lie, right? So just because you say you're going to do something, just because you got baptized even, just because you raised your hand during a, a prayer on, on a Sunday when you were 16 at a youth camp does not mean that you're saved. And, and Jesus actually affirms this belief when he says, depart from me, I never knew you. Right. And and he's not talking to atheists or right. or or Jews or Muslims or Buddhists. He's talking to Christians mm -hmm. because what is their response? They're like, wait a minute. Did not we prophesy in your name? Did not yeah. we cast demons out in your name? Do works in your name? Did not we like didn't I wasn't I the youth pastor? Wasn't I <laughs> wasn't wasn't I the worship director? Didn't I yeah. have this homeless ministry all in your name, Jesus? And what does yeah. he say? He said, you didn't know me. You never knew me. Yeah. And and I think that there's evidence of knowing Christ. And I think that um, sometimes it's eat like with anything. A lot of people, you know, you fake it till you make it. But yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, I think the better question is not whether or not you lose your salvation. I think the better question is whether or not you were you were ever saved to begin with. That's that's an interesting question, because. I was last night in preparation for all of this. I've just been, fin I finished up John. I, I read some of Mark. And one of the things that stood out to me in Mark was he said, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you guys now, it's, I'm going to paraphrase here. All right? yeah. but he's, he was basically saying, I'm telling you right now, there'll be a time where you're going to come, come to the kingdom and the king is going to come out and separate, you know, you two in, from left to right. And on the right is going to be this group. And on the left is going to be this group. And I will, I, I, and I guess he says to one, one side, you are welcome in here because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you, you gave me to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me into your home, et cetera. And they were even surprised. Like, when did I, like, what? When did I feed you? He says, because yeah. what you did to your brothers and sisters, you did to me, right? And, and so we can we can have this conversation all day long about how saved we are about yeah. how righteous we are about how good we are but it, it's it's a little more than that i feel right and and so the i brought that up just slight just briefly to ask to ask this question um because some some people say it's not through your works that's going to save you but that sounds that may sound like works to some people i'm not saying it sounds like that to me but that may sound like works to some people so i, I you know what i think that um Let's say in, in James, it says faith without works is dead, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't say that you must have works in order to have faith, but it, it, it basically saying that evidence of your faith, will it, fruit will be bared out. You know, mm -hmm. like you can't you, imagine, imagine for a second, actually believing 2000 years ago, Jesus came to earth, took on all of your sin. And willingly went to the cross to die for you. Imagine actually believing that in your heart. 
and still being the same person after you before, like the before and after, there's no difference. It's impossible, right? So when James is saying faith without works is dead, he's not saying you must do works in order to have faith. He's saying if you re had true faith, there would be fruit. And, and that fruit is, 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 is shown in our works. Like the, the pushback I would have on that would be the thief on the cross, right? And that's the easy one to answer. Like we're, we're either saying that the thief on the cross is in heaven with Jesus because Jesus said he was going to be there, or we're saying Jesus lied to him. Because right? he wasn't it, baptized, because he didn't do this, because he... Again, all of those things are, are, are physical. They're, they're like, they're like examples. They're, 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 they're public declarations of what you already believe, right? It says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. But, but the main important thing is to have a renewal of your heart. You, our hearts of stone are now turned into hearts of flesh. And when people have this checklist Christianity where you have to do A through Z or, or else, that's not what Scripture teaches. That's not what I read when I read Scripture. I read that once the Holy Spirit comes in you, everything changes. And I can tell you in my personal life, because I wasn't always a Christian, like I always believed in God, but I wasn't walking, I wasn't living my life for God, mm -hmm. right? So my relationship with music changed. My relationship with what I watched on television changed. My relationship with the words I spoke changed. Mm -hmm. The people I hung out with changed. Everything about me that was leading me away from Christ started to diminish, and everything that was leading me closer to him started to expand. And I think that that, that is evidence of faith and evidence of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Hmm. Why do you suppose that some people don't change all of that? I, I don't want to just I just want to harshly say this because they don't have the spirit, right? Because that that could come across that way. But yeah, um, from from my point of view, um, it, it's it often shows that they understand it, they love God, but it seems like it's only like an intellectualized thing. It doesn't seem mm. to have like poured down into something deeper that that says wow like god actually did this for me and he's talking to the father on my behalf that that i may also be loved as he is loved and that we may be yeah. one right i think so so um you guys were talking to, you guys were saying a story about this guy who who uh, was a uh, was a drug user and he would do drugs often he would he would uh pass out in the front steps of the church and and Pastor Chad would be like, hey, you're still loved. We still love you. Um, I think that, say say the question one more time. So what is it that, why do you think that some people don't make all those okay. changes? Those there two it is. changes. Okay. So I, I think it's like a lot, a lot more difficult and a lot more complex than just, like you said, black and white answer. I think that the reason that people don't make the change is because they're they're fighting battles that they're ill-equipped to win. And a lot of times we're we're here and we're in the physical and mm -hmm. we're fighting the battle with physical tools, right? Mm -hmm. And we're with physical weapons, but the the battle's actually happening in the spirit, right? Like there's a whole another spirit world that that we don't see that's unseen to us that that that's where the real fight is taking place and Unless we put on the full armor of God, right? Unless we're doing the, the discipline of, of prayer, of reading God's word, right? Of fasting, like we're, we're almost handicapping ourselves because these things are generational. Many of the sins that you and I deal with, many of the sins that, that, that we deal with in society, it, it, it was like our great, great grandparents sin. And it's, it's trickled down to us through generation. And, that's one thing we don't talk enough about is generational curse mm -hmm. and about the, the, the sin of addiction, the sin of drug addiction or alcoholism or or the sin of lust or homosexuality or uh, all these sins. They're, they're being passed down to us from generations. And we if, if we think it's just us, a one of one, like, oh, this is just my sin to this is just my issue we're we're only addressing part of the sin and we're not addressing the root of the sin and unless we go to our knees to god in prayer 
in the word and in fasting, oftentimes we're not going to be able to get over that hump and stay over that hump. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 That's good. Uh, peace out, Pastor Chad. He's uh, He was listening to the conversation, but unfortunately he has to leave. Um, we had a question here by Mama Bear who yeah. said, how does a baby, so how does a baby Christian know that Jesus will, oh, I'm sorry. How does a how do I, as a baby Christian, know that Jesus will not turn me away? Because his word says he won't, you know, because, <laughs> I mean, it, it, to, to oversimplify it, I think that, I think the, the big hurdle that that quote unquote baby Christians need to get over is because th in my in my history or or in my um, in my past this is what I've seen and I've seen when people first come to Christianity let's say you're just now getting into worship you're listening to all these great songs they're 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 making you feel something on the inside you are you are so in love with Jesus Christ when you first get there that you almost think that you I've walked out of some sermons and told myself, that's it. I'm never going to sin again. I'm done. It's over. Like, I get it. Yeah. Or or I think like, oh, now I'm walking with Jesus. Now I'm serving in my church. Now I'm going to a Bible study. I'm in his word. I'm praying. I'm fasting. And we think our lives are about to get easier. And then when it starts to get harder, we're like, whoa, what happened? So it's not that Jesus will turn us away. It's that we will look at our circumstances instead of looking at the Savior behind the circumstance. Mm -hmm. It's not him that turns us away. It's us that turns him away. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier about the three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, it, even if God doesn't come through, what is your faith going to look like? What Do you have an even if faith in Jesus? Or is it, if you do this, I'll still believe you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we want something. We want something first, so that in order to believe, um, something you said that was interesting because I've heard that so many times before. It's like, I, you know, not for me, but from other people. Like, I'm never gonna do this ever again. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, you're 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 overwhelmed by this beautiful feeling of like feeling loved and feeling in his presence, and and you feel like that that's just it. This is it. This is the turning point. I'm I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm never gonna turn back into this thing again. And what's interesting about that to me is that sometimes the mind paces you. Like your it's your own mind that says, okay, 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 cool, cool, yeah, we'll surrender. We're 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 getting we're going to give into this. We'll never use that drug again. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. And you're like, you're like, yes, excellent. Everything's on board. But then as soon as the mind gets an opportunity, it wants to fall back into its habit because it it still be, is dependent on the chemicals that it, that it, the brain produces. Sure. It's For it's sure. it's dependent on on re wanting to repeat experiences, things like that. And then before you know it, you're knee deep in your own sin again. Um, Beautiful. Um, how do I know I, if I'm saved? Ask right, Joy. So do you want to you want to uh, touch that question first, or the or, or your comment you were just making about people falling back in when they said they're never going to do something again? Oh, go, go ahead. Fo follow up on that. Yeah. So I think Chad, uh, Pastor Chad, was saying it uh, is that we 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 lose sight of our identity. Like oftentimes we identify with uh, the the physical, and and we lose sight of who actually defines whether or not we're a son or a daughter and and what whether or not we are loved the the entire world can turn their back on you that that's one thing he was saying like he, he was saying cut off. oh i cut off can you hear me oh well, so, mine's delayed i guess it's still it's delayed oh. mine is oh delayed oh there you go there you go okay oh, so it's stuck again <laughs> Give it a second. I'm not sure if you're, if it's on your side or if it's on my side. Oh, there it is. I Are think you you're good. good. Yeah, okay. you're good. Go All for right. it. So right. when we fall back into the same sin we swore we'd never do, I think Chad hit it on the, on the head when he said, the Holy Spirit's not trying to make us feel shame or guilt. That's the devil's job. The devil's mm -hmm. there to shame us and to guilt us. But this is what happens when you are in relationship with Christ is let's say pre your relationship with Christ, you can go and sin all night and you probably wouldn't think twice about it, right? <laughs> it would just be part of your life. Right. But now, once you've accepted Jesus and you know like intellectually what that means, and then you still fall into sin, then you begin to 
self-loathe. You begin to self-condemn because you know now there's no, mm-hmm. like you can't hide behind ignorance. Now you're fully aware right. of who it is you're sinning against and right, what right. the person you sinned against did for you and you still sinned against mm-hmm. them. So the, the enemy, the devil loves it when a Christian falls because mm-hmm. he is going to full court press that man, that son or daughter into, into thinking like, into second guessing their faith, into second guessing and to just shaming themselves. And that's not what God's here to do. He's not here to shame us, right? He's here to redirect us and so that we may pivot and turn from and repent. Repentance is something that a lot of churches don't want to talk about, but we're in a constant state of sanctification. And yes, I I agree with Chad, we're saints. We don't identify as sinners anymore, although we still sin. But when we sin, we must repent and turn from. Like in, in Matthew, when, when, when the disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? Part of that is confess. <laughs> you know, con- forgive us our sins, right? It's yeah. easy for us to pray to God to forgive us. It's a lot harder, the, the next line, which is as we forgive those who... Um, I want to... Maybe this is this is a topic for another for another. Uh, episode, but you just said, "How do we pray?" And I found it interesting in one of the one of the parts uh, where I guess it was a, a a person who had some kind of a demon or something, and the apostles couldn't couldn't get rid of it. Yeah. And Christ was like, "Like, how much longer do I have to be here with you guys? Like, really? <laughs> like, bring them to me." And he and he yeah. said some words, and then they asked them, they questioned him, like, "Why why couldn't we do it?" And he said, "Because yeah. because some demons." can only be expelled by prayer but you look at what he actually said and that was more of a command than anything else so like so that left me asking like okay so what is what is prayer because if that's prayer then you know we have to maybe maybe question it a little deeper I, yeah i i think that when when we go to when we like okay a lot of people and i deal with youth a lot so the other day we were having a discussion and the whole topic was about prayer and I was like, how do you guys pray? And some of my youth are like, well, I try to use like big words. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like I'm like, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, like, I'm like, so you're trying to impress God with a <laughs> with a prayer that he knew you were going to pray before he created you, right? Like yeah. he's unimpressed by your language. So I think when 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 the apostles asked Jesus, how do we pray? I think he he breaks it down like like pretty systematically and easy to follow, right? And it's like, um, our father. So the first thing we have to do is we have to approach God and we have to put him in his proper place. His place is as our father. He is our father. He's humanity's dad. And who are, and then we have to adore who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed meaning set apart. Your name is above every name, right? And then he, so it, it, there's an acronym. It goes A-C-T-S and if you're having difficulties with how to pray, this is a pretty good model to follow. So the A stands for adoration. You you come to God with adoration. You 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 adore God. And then the C stands for confession. The T stands for thanksgiving. You thank God for everything. Mm-hmm. And I had mentioned you may be in your life. You may be one of these people in your life that don't have anything to thank to be thankful for in your mind. But the good news is that the Bible covers that because the Bible says to consider it joy when you suffer through trials of many kinds, because it, it purifies, it strengthens our faith. So it, 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 it's not just the good things we're to be thankful for. It's everything we're to be thankful right. for. And then the last thing is we ask God for what it is that we want. And this is important because many people, no one has a problem asking God for something, but <laughs> the whole reason that we're asking God for things should be to edify the church, to glorify right. the son. So we can't say, Hey God, um, I'm, I'm, I've got this YouTube platform and I want to blow it up to, so that millions of people can see me and then end it there. It has to be, yeah. God, I want millions of people to subscribe so that they can hear about you. Right. We always, all of our prayers, all of our blessings, everything that we request of God should always be so that we can point more people to him. Right. It should never end with us. The blessings should never end with us. They should, the blessing is actually not for us. That's just like the, the the tip of the iceberg. The blessing actually lies underneath the surface with the seeds that you're going to plant and I'm going to plant that we'll never even know came to bear fruit. Right. Uh, that's, that's interesting. 
really, really interesting. I yesterday I, I watched a video sort of touched on that. Um, I forgot the gentleman's name, but briefly touched on the fact that I'll, you know, when someone's really questioning why doesn't God answer certain certain prayers, and I huh. think it, I think it was just clear in John um, when Christ said he was going to go and talk to the Father and any and and anything that you ask, uh, he would give you. Um, there mm -hmm. seems to be like that, yeah, that disclaimer because he's not just saying, "Hey, I, I came here to die for you," but I came here to die as a mission to prove to my father that I obey him and you are to obey me. And I'm going to go into the father and ask him on, ask him to send you uh, an advocate, someone to, to finish teaching you this, the truth. And, and um, he, that the advocate won't speak words of him that are his own, yeah. but that I will be whispering everything that he will, that he will say. Yeah. Um, and it seems like, the point to all of this is to glorify God, Father, period. Like just all of it. Everything should be done to glorify him. If it's not glorifying him, you can't trust that it's going to be his will because it's it's mm -hmm. it's his will versus your will, right? Um so, and so I, would, anyway, I would say even sometimes I would say a lot of us think that God doesn't answer. He does, just the answer is no a bunch. <laughs> you know, like nah. it's not that he doesn't get like your 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 child can be like, hey dad, uh, it's it's breakfast. Can I have ice cream? You say no. Yeah. You answered her. You just didn't give her the answer she wanted. <laughs> so uh, a lot of times we 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 pray for things. Let let's look at it like this. Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. He asked to not go to the cross. He said, Father, if, if, if there's any other way, like to let this cup pass for me. Please let this cup pass. But he he ends it with the way we need to end our prayers. He's like, but forget what I want. I want what you want. So a lot of times we may even think that even if we're asking for something and we say it's to glorify you, God, in our heart, it might not be. And even if it is, if it's not in God's will, right? So if Jesus himself was like, look, I'm not down with going to the cross. I know what it's going to cost. I know what it's going to feel like. I know the people that are going to turn their back on me. I don't want to do it. And he doesn't stop there. He says, but look, forget about what I want. I want what you want because I know what you want is, is, is what's best, right? So instead of us asking God for things, we need to ask God for what he wants in our life. Mm. So, so a prayer I would pray is like, God, Reveal to me what it is you want for me in, in this life. What it is you want your servant to do while I'm here, right? Instead of saying, oh, well, God, um, I'll tell you a story. It was, it was a tragic story. And uh, this woman, um, her, her daughter was on her balcony and she was taking a selfie. This has happened like maybe like three months ago. And she fell off the balcony, fifth floor, and she mm -hmm. landed on the pavement. And she was pretty much pronounced brain dead from the first night. And this woman, she was like, I was praying in the hospital with her and her family. And this woman was believing for a miracle. And, and she was like, God's going to come through. And, and I was inviting her to church. And she's like, I'll go to church when my daughter's out of the hospital. Right. Long story short, the daughter never made it out of the hospital. Right. And my, my prayer since my prayer since then has been for this woman to not lose her faith in Jesus because he didn't answer her prayer the way that she wanted him to answer the prayer, right? And when we lose people, it's very difficult and very easy to question God. But it, 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 if you look at it, this is the way I look at it. If someone is battling with a disease and, and, and they're, they're in the hospital and they end up passing away, the way I look at it is if they accepted Jesus, they are healed. You know what I mean? Like they're in heaven and they're never going to feel any of what we have to feel here. So I think that the, the the whole asking God and he doesn't answer, I think it's a loaded question because he does. He just doesn't give us the answers we want. And even in the book of Job, right, which is like the biggest example of like, hey, God did all this stuff to this guy who was great. The The, the question of why does bad things happen to good people, it doesn't even get answered in the book of Job. It doesn't get answered in the scriptures. Why do bad things happen to good people? Hmm. There's no answer for that in, in the Bible, right? So 
it, we, we, we have to understand that there's some things that we're never going to understand, right? There's some things that we're not going to know till we get to heaven. And we have to trust God for everything, not just for the things that are easy to trust him for, but for everything in our life. And that's not easy to do. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> I mean, it took the Israelites 40 years to get to the promised land. <laughs> and, and only two of them got to the promised land that left Egypt. So think about that, right? So like in, in, in the Lord's Prayer, which says, give us this day our daily bread. What was it that God was trying to show his people? Because when they tried to save the bread, what would happen to it? It would it would vanquish. It would it would it would it would vaporize. It would cease to exist. And what he was showing his people was like, look, you can't save up for a rainy day. I am your savings. I'm the only thing you can count on. I'm the only thing that you can count on. That's true. Oh, man, I. I feel I feel foolish for the way that I used to think, to be honest, Um because now that I'm hearing this in a in a more loving setting, it's clicking a lot better. It's very unfortunate that I ran into so many angry Christians who all they wanted to say was that I was I was a horrible person for this and that and the other. And they would and they would push hot buttons too. They would tell me like because I only had Liana e, my my first daughter. Uh, they would say like, imagine your daughter burning in hell, and is that what you want? And it's like wow, like the the fear of loss tactic. Like I was in sales, like really, that's what we're going with, you know? Like it was it was hard. It's hard. And and so being on this side, hearing everything that you're saying and being open to 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 the idea is uh, well, it's it's heartwarming. Why does, that, why does that make you feel foolish? <laughs> no, that I was foolish how I was okay, how okay, I okay. used to think. Okay, okay, I was just curious. You know, I was foolish for, for thinking the way that I was thinking because, mm -hmm. well, to be honest, I was angry. I was really upset. It, like as you said, like losing someone is hard. Uh, I lost my grandfather, but it brought me closer to God. What was what would push me away from God were people who were telling me that the things that I was experiencing with God were not really God. It was the devil. Oh, and so then yeah. that's that's when things started to to trouble me. And I was like, OK, well, then I'm 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 out. I'm out. Look, and I, I think that you're I mean, justifiably so, because it's easy for like, let's say we can the world could look at Lil Nas X video and be like, that's clearly not from God. Right. Mm -hmm. But he's not present. He's not representing Christianity, right? <laughs> it, so, so the devil for sure is working through Little Nas X. But mm. like, he, the, the devil really wants to work in the church, right? He wants to work through quote unquote church people, mm. right? And then you look at them and you're like, oh well, this person goes to church every Sunday and they read their Bible and they do their rosary or whatever it is that they do, and they're telling me these things, right? It, I think what it does is it turns people. There's a way to, to tell the truth without judging the person you're speaking to, because the truth is, if you were judging everyone, you'd have to judge yourself. And we're all deserving of hell. Every one of us, apart from Jesus Christ, deserves hell. So it's not for us to judge um, someone else. Now, I will say <clears throat> I will say this. It's not for us. We, we're not really to judge the non-Christian. But but Paul does say this in First Corinthians chapter five. He goes, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. So many would take that scripture and be like, oh, if someone in the church is living in sin, we're going to kick them out. But that's not I don't think that's the call. Mm -hmm. But what I do think the call is, is having loving conversations that are rooted in truth about some hard topics that a lot of churches rather not touch because because we, we, we live in this seeker friendly environment where we're trying to make it so easy for people to come to Jesus. But this is the problem when you if, it, if it's easy to get there and then it starts to get hard. Right. Because it will get hard. Jesus says you will die for loving me like they killed me. What do you think they're going to do to you? Mm -hmm. That's coming for the Christian. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it's if it's easy to get in, and if it's e if you if you make it so like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna not talk about the sin that you're dealing with. We're not gonna call you to repentance, and you can call someone to repentance and love them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think that most people um, 
that that get offended, it's either because of the tone of 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 the of the person delivering the message or because of the message in itself. And the truth is the gospel is an offensive message. The, the message is this. Unless you die having Christ and the Holy Spirit in your heart, you're going to spend eternity apart from him. That is an offense. You, you said it earlier, like there were some things that were said that offended me. Now, we as people right. have missed we've misrepresented. So like, let's say we, we've been talking about the way we grew up, you and I, in, in the Catholic church. And again, I, I had a kid the other day, came to my youth group. He had shorts on, a sleeveless shirt and chancletas. And I, <laughs> and I go, chancletas, you know, I'm, I'm here from Miami. We can do the, half, the second half of this interview in Spanish if you want. And I, <laughs> oh, claro que sí. and I said, uh, and I said, Nick, Uh, would you dress like that on Sunday to go to church? And he's like, no. And I'm like, why not? And he's like, well, he couldn't really give me a straight answer. And I said, look, if Jesus was given the sermon, if he was the one from the pulpit preaching and you tried to come in the church and you were wearing chancletas, a sleeveless shirt and some shorts, do you think he would be like, hey, Nick, sorry, maybe next time when you dress <laughs> better, hey, go home and get changed and then you can come in? Yeah, of no. course, that's not his character. No, Jesus is hanging out with the worst of the worst people. So mm -hmm. he's for sure going to let a guy in that wants to hear about him. That's wearing a sleeveless shirt. But there's churches that won't let you in the building unless you they, they want you to um, behave before you belong. They mm -hmm. want you to conform first. They don't want you to come in as a work in progress, because the truth is, bro, all of us are works in progress. So this is this is where you get like the like the split. I believe Jesus loves us just as we are. Mm -hmm. I believe he meets us exactly where we are. Mm -hmm. But the hard truth is this. He loves us so much to let us stay that way. We can't stay how we are. We can come as we are. Mm -hmm. But but if we accept them, we for sure not staying as we are. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Wow. But then, But then so is it our job to change, to push the person to change? I mean, okay. So let's say push is a. I you can use any any you can use a hundred words in this situation. It's our job to lovingly try to steward and shepherd people uh, that in a way that leads them to truth, in a way that without turning our backs on them, without um, speaking about them negatively, without gossiping about them, without kicking them out of our church. It's our job. And, and the truth is that most of the time we don't want to have hard conversations because we're afraid of what we'll lose. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's opportunities or relationships. We're afraid of losing these things. So we are willing to offend God to appease man instead of we're willing to offend man to please God. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a way to, to, to be truthful without being judgmental if that makes any sense it does well it does it, it does i was gonna say it does to me but um it does make sense so if we could just circle it back to the holy spirit how how is the holy spirit working uh, in, in that scenario in the scenario where i am to tell someone that they are loved by god and that maybe that maybe god isn't happy about The things that that isn't happy about the things that they're doing, because the person has to care enough about themselves to want to even be saved, or they have to care enough about themselves enough to want to live a better life, you know. And we're seeing more and more people who are going deeper and deeper into this feeling that it's just like this is my life, it's mine, it's mine, and I can do with it whatever I want. And you yeah. can't tell me what to do, and neither can God. He gave it to me, so I'm gonna do with it whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> I think the Holy Spirit's job is, you guys spoke about it on, on Wednesday, he's a comforter. And he's there to hopefully direct our steps. So many times we act out of emotions, right? Uh, anger, joy, pain, fear, We're whatever. Talking about it. And, and the truth is this, emotions are from God. He created them, right? Um, but we're not supposed to act out of them. We're supposed to take the emotion 
allow the emotions to inform us, to mm. um, to kind of motivate us. But we're supposed to take those emotions to the Holy Spirit, and he's supposed to tell us what to do with them. So you were talking about your wife, you and your wife, and about, um, you know, like sometimes, or he was talking about, hey, sometimes like marriage is pretty hard. So, so and, and, and the wife will press buttons that are that touch on some of his insecurities. And I was like, man, I, I feel that. And a lot of times I give in to the emotions like what? She's saying I don't provide for my family or I don't do this or do that. And, and I'll snap back instead of taking the emotions, taking the emotions to the Holy Spirit and then letting the Holy Spirit lead me in real time. We're talking about Ooh. like this, right? Yeah. Ah, it, it, okay. This is not like uh, like hindsight Holy Spirit. This is in real time Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And yeah. that's a difficult thing to do. That that beautiful. I'm really glad that you went there. I was hoping that you would go there actually, because I don't want to. I don't like to lead, you know. You, you know. But uh, yeah, it's like it's true. Sometimes we give into that to that feeling, right? It's like, man, like I said, I was gonna fix the sink. You don't need to remind me every six months, <laughs> right? Like you don't have to keep reminding me every six months that oh, I man. need to fix the sink. I said I was gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, I kidding. But but um, okay. So beautiful. Okay, so let's play with that a little bit. Uh, let's just say that I, I'm I'm a sinner. You see me, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, abusing substances. Yeah. And, you know, in, in your heart, you want to talk to me about living a better life. Right? <clears throat> You're telling me the Holy Spirit is there guiding you. It's with you. And from what I sort of understood is that you're allowing yourself to be sort of out of the way a little bit, just just slightly to consult mm. and to allow the Holy Spirit to say, this person is suffering in this way. Let, yeah. you know, speak. Cause, cause the Holy Spirit knows what's in, his, in the person's heart would know what's in my heart in this for case. Sure. Right. For sure. And, and it, and you don't. And so <laughs> your approach might be too, too harsh or too direct and it might hit certain buttons, but if you're guided and you're being led by the, by the Holy Spirit, your approach may be completely different. Something you probably didn't even consider mm. approaching. Oh yeah, right? I mean, look that 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 even happens. I'm I'm sure it happens in every aspect of your of your life. But let's say there's many times where I'll be preaching a sermon and um, I'll use an illustration or a scripture passage that I wasn't planning on using, and it was it was almost as if it just came to me. I, I didn't do anything to, I, I didn't study on that passage. I didn't think about that illustration. And in in real time, in the middle of the sermon, it would come to me, and it would make sense to drive home the point that God wants his people to hear. Now, with, with me, as I've matured in my relationship with God, um, I've, I've been more receptive to following the Holy Spirit's directions. Mm -hmm. now, now, I love my mom. I loved her until the day she passed away. And um, when she asked me to clean my room, I didn't listen most of the time, <laughs> right? I right. still yeah. loved her. I still knew she was my mother. I still knew that she loved me more than anything. And I still know the Holy Spirit loves me more than anybody here can love me. But I still don't obey the Holy Spirit all the time. And many times with me, it would be like, I'll give you an example. I, I was walking the streets about, uh, I don't know, about two years ago. And I see this woman and she's sitting on a bench. And... <clears throat> I just felt the Holy Spirit say she needs to be comforted, right? She needs someone to talk to. And I was like, bro, like, I'm not doing it, <laughs> right? <laughs> and and we, I locked eyes with this woman and I walked past her. And now I'm like maybe 10 feet past her. And I stop in the middle of the sidewalk and I'm literally having like a debate with the Holy Spirit. Like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. yes. And I'm like, I'm not doing it. He's like, you're going to do it. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. He's like, I want you to do it. So, so then, you know what I said? You know what? I will submit and I will do it. And I turned around and I said, excuse me, do you mind if I sit down? And I sat down with her. And long story short, like, I was exactly what she needed, right? And, and, mm -hmm. and, and that conversation that we had, I don't remember her name, Um. I don't remember a, a lot about her, but I remember the Holy Spirit directing me to do something that 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 he wanted me to do and me being obedient and her being blessed by it. So mm -hmm. I think we are instruments of the Holy Spirit. It's like we're it's like we're a bunch of trumpets and the Holy Spirit's like Louis Armstrong just waiting to pick us up and play. <laughs> us, right. 
Yeah. And, and yeah. we know that we know the sounds that come out of a Louis Armstrong trumpet, right? We 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 know the songs. Yeah. We we yeah. so Magic. all we are is instruments, but we have to be available. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to pick us up and use us, and then we have to be careful to not take credit when He does. Mm -hmm. Like oh, like I, like I brought this person to stop. No, you didn't. <laughs> Holy, the Holy Spirit yeah. just used you, like right. you said, like the telephone right. thing. Like the Holy Spirit just used me to help bring this person to Himself. This is this is really important because in the stories, as I'm reading them, even Christ didn't take credit. He said, "I can do this because my Father has." <clears throat> Because of the power that he is he is giving me, and everything he did, he pointed right back to that. And I feel like it should be the same way for us. Like when we're doing something, it should be pointed yeah. back to that. Well, I want to tell you an interesting story. Like like I don't like to I don't I don't like to tell these stories because I don't like to be like look at me, right? But I have to yeah. tell you because it's so this this is kind of touching on what you said. Uh, a few weeks ago, we went to visit uh, her. Um, her brother had prom. And so we we went and we did photos and stuff on our way on our way back home. We stopped by this gas station. I had Luna, my my oh, six year old, in the back seat. She was in the back seat. Daughter, my daughter Luna, six six yeah. years old. I get out of the car. I go into the gas station, and as I'm passing, there's this homeless woman. She's talking to herself, right? So usually, if they ask for something, I'll either give them some change or I'll say I don't, I don't have any. If I don't have any, right? I had I had change, but I had I had you know twenties. $20 bills. I passed by, didn't, didn't even look at her to be honest. Okay. But something in me was just like, you should help. You should do something. Mm. But I paid for the gas. I walked out and I forgot, like, I didn't do anything about it. And I was like, okay, just keep walking. You missed the opportunity, but something was like tugging at me. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess up. And I'm in the car and she's talking to me while I didn't know he was thinking that. And she's in the car and she's telling me, Erica, why are so many people like walking by the lady and they're not even looking at her like acknowledging that she's there and i was like wow. oh i don't know some people they're just distracted they're busy and she's like but my dad didn't even look at her and my <laughs> oh, dad usually do and my dad usually doesn't he didn't hear any of this and i go oh maybe he didn't have any change baby i you know i don't know and she's like oh, okay i just feel bad like she's just a sweet sweet loving little Amazing. girl and then Amazing. yes and then he gets into the car i get in the car and she's like dad and then she tells him, why didn't you help that lady? And I'm like, I'm sorry, mama. I don't, I don't have, I don't have any change. She goes, well, go get change. Mm -hmm. And I and sat there and I almost cried. Yeah. Man. I almost cried because I, I'm thinking like, you should have listened. You should have, that, that's who you are. And you didn't listen. You didn't listen. And you have a six-year-old reminding you of the thing that you go online mm -hmm. and say all the time, yeah. spread love. Where is this spread love, right? So I said, you know what, Mama, you're right. I got up, I pulled it out, I gave her, I gave a her 20. a twenty. Mm -hmm. She looked at me like I had given her a million dollars. Yeah, like, yeah, I saw her thank, face. Thank, thank you. And and I'm like, you're welcome. She's like, Blick. she said, oh, have a good night. And I said, you too. God bless you. And then she's like, ha ha have a good night. Like she yeah. just kept repeating. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Like like. You know, but it's these, these, you're right. There's these subtle push pushes. Sometimes it's For a sure. really strong push. And it's just so interesting that even just like in a child, like yeah. it could still push you to that. And I'm like, I, well, I cried almost for, for two reasons. One is that, that I should have listened. And the second was just that like, you know, I'm proud of that little girl. She's for sure. You know, she's, she's so beautiful. It's amazing. And I, yeah. I think that you touching on that is something that we need to really like, talk about as as a church and one of them is that when the scripture says unless surely i tell you unless you become like one of these children you will not inherit the kingdom right i think that that there's multiple meanings there i think first of all like when my daughter was born she's 21 months now and um when she was born if we had just left her uh, in her room and went on vacation for three months when we got back she wouldn't be alive anymore right so like what god is saying is that Unless you depend on me for literal your life, <laughs> for everything, to feed you, to clothe you, to change you, to love you, to comfort you, to, to house you, to shelter you. Unless you, 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 you become like a child who depends on their parents for everything, you won't inherit the kingdom. But I, I think he also means unless you look at the world like children do, mm -hmm. right? Like your daughter 
hmm. who hasn't allowed the ways of the the Satan to like skew the way she sees people, to skew the way that she approaches people, to be like, oh, I wonder. Oh, we're in this time of COVID. Don't even get close to her. You know, like where she doesn't have a mask, or you know, like unless we become like children. And I think another misrepresentation is like we most of the disciples were in their teens when they were chosen. Hmm. These we're not talking about full grown adults, you know, because in, in, in context. You didn't have disciples that were close to your own age. Many people, many scholars would say that Peter was probably the oldest and he was probably at the oldest. He was 30. But the youngest disciples were thought to be 16, 15 years old. And we'll look at a 15, 16 year old and, be, and just like discard them because they don't have <laughs> they don't have experience. Well, the right. truth is this, that God doesn't call qualified people. He, qual he qualifies called people. Right. So he doesn't he doesn't call the, the qualified. He qualifies the called. And we need to do a, a job of what you mentioned earlier of getting out of the way so that God could take over and of not taking credit when it's clearly him that's working. Man. Um, and, and somebody's pointing out that God that children know the love of God. And, and that little girl, man, she tells me a thousand times she loves me. A day non-stop like, just it's, all day that's amazing. she said it she's eating daddy i love you i love it too or like we're watching a movie daddy i love you i love you daddy and and it's just this she's yeah. so kind and loving with beautiful her approaches ball too. Of like love. beautiful reminders like when he's like feels like he's getting like flustered too or like overwhelmed she's like daddy remember patience means to be calm <laughs> and and she is just the and it just so her voice is so loving and calm i just yeah she's so understanding <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous how and then like it, i do it i ask i ask her I, I i go why did you pick me to be your dad like you know <laughs> because because i love you <laughs> yeah. that's awesome uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, that's then, awesome man. and and then one thing we do like and i'm sure you may struggle with this but at the end of the day as as husbands right our our our, our number one priority is our wives and a lot of times when we have kids and then we look at those kids like, bro, hey, hey, babe, I love you, but get behind her. Do you see what she's doing? Like, look how <laughs> look how awesome she is. Yeah. Um, and, and we can lose sight of that. And we're called like the two, husband and wife, they're joined together, they're not one. And that's why our children grow and leave us one day. So like if you make if we make our children the priority in the home and then they leave, <laughs> we're gonna be stuck with like, what do we do now? <laughs> They're like, oh, hi, I'm Leonardo. Oh, hey, how you <laughs> nice doing? To meet, nice to what? meet you. What's your favorite, what's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, they're 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 beautiful, and and I, I've been wanting to keep in mind what, what the conversation that we're having here is a, yeah. a, about the the Holy Spirit, and yeah. and so I I feel like I I learned a lot more today. I mean, that is the goal. Um, to learn a little bit more and get closer to what, what that idea is, um, and and understand. So, for, in, in the beginning, you mentioned that that the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have ideas about the Holy Spirit that are more secondary. What do you, what would you say is like the most important thing that we should we should think about or that we should keep in mind and in heart and in spirit when it comes to the Holy Spirit and and the role that it plays in our lives. I mean, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that he's for you, right? He's with you. I heard someone say it like this. Uh, you could walk a million miles away from God. And, and the beautiful thing is like when you turn around, you don't have to walk those million miles back. <laughs> he's, he's right there. Oh, that's beautiful, man. Right? He's like, it's yeah. like, it's like he's I got his that. hand on your shoulder everywhere you go. And Same. if you're not listening or hearing from him, it's not him that stopped speaking. It's you that stopped listening. It's mm -hmm. you that, that allowed like the world to drown him out, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, we're all going through financial things, like whether it's financial or, or the future, like you said, you're, you're thinking too much about the future or you're dwelling too much in the past. You're not, you're not in, you're not present in the here and now. I think as far as the misrepresent misrepresentation of the Holy spirit, I think that the Bible is clear is that he gives certain people certain gifts. Not everyone has the gift of prophecy. 
Not everyone has the gift of speaking in tongues. Not everyone has the gift of interpretation of tongues or 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 healing or not everyone has all the gifts, right? And it, it comes down to like the five-fold ministry where as a church, we need apostles, we need prophets, we need evangelists, we need teachers or shepherds, and, and we need, you know, all of these things, right? And I think that when you box in believers, like at the end of the day, the, there'll be evidence of faith in your life. But if you haven't accepted Jesus, this is the this is the tricky part because there's people that do not believe that act more Christian like than Christians. And that's what really hurts us in the in the world of public perception where we have people that are bigger philanthropists than we are. Right. And I fully believe this in my heart that the Christian man, the Christian woman should be the best in every single field that exists. We should be the best teachers. We should be the best doctors. We should be the best pastors. We should be the best everything because we're called to that. We're called to that excellence, right? And oftentimes that's not the case. And in, in your case growing up and being judged by people that were supposed to love you, you know, or let's say in, in, in my case, like I grew up in a, in a Cuban household and a lot of my family was like just they had racism in them. You know, and, I, and I'm thinking like, hey, you believe in God, but and you and you know that he created all these people. Yeah. But for some reason or another, you don't like these people because they look different. So for me, I had a lot of theological questions, even as a child. Uh -huh. Right. And I wrestled uh -huh. with those in my heart. Uh -huh. And over time, as the Holy Spirit began to speak more, as I began to listen more, as I began to, um, you know, kind of submit more. Uh -huh. I, I was able to gain a full understanding. So if, if you ask me what the number one thing is about the Holy Spirit that we should know, it's that, is that he, he's here for you. He loves you. Uh, he'll never leave you. Um, he will always be there to direct you. He's not here to guilt you or to, or to shame you, but he is here to correct you. So, you know, you have to be willing to take the correction. You have to be willing to take that medicine that tastes bad, that, you know, knowing that Robitussin, that, cl <laughs> that clear purple, that oh. nobody, oh, you know what I'm talking about. You know, no one likes taking the Robitussin, right? No yeah. one likes being, yeah. no one likes being convicted, but it is necessary because if, if, if you, if you, if you avoid conviction, you're going to die. And this is the truth for the non-believer, for the non-believer, Earth is the closest they'll ever get to heaven. Ooh. And for the believer, for the believer, earth is the closest we'll ever get to hell. Let that sink in for a minute. Mm. If you mm. die believing in Christ, earth was the closest you'll ever experience to hell. And if you die not believing, this is the best you'll ever get it. Mm. That's deep. I'm going to let that sink in just, just a little bit. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, we, we, let's we can let's talk about the gifts for just a okay bit because uh, we're we're talking to to brother Holland a few weeks ago and he pointed yeah. out that that we you know we have the gift of, of prophecy of tongues and, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there's all these gifts right yeah and it was pointing out that one and forgive me I'm an amateur so I don't know the exact uh, uh, book and and paragraph. But uh, he was talking about how if you speak the tongues of uh, the, the language of the angels, but you do not have love, you're like just making noise. Practically, is what he's saying. And yeah. he gave several. It gives several uh, examples of if you do this, if you have this gift, but you don't have love, then you're not. You know, it's you're nothing, right. right? And he pointed out something very beautiful to me. He says like. Because a lot of people will go, well, maybe I'm not loved by God because I don't have uh, mm. speaking tongues. Maybe I'm not loved by God because I don't have these gifts. But he pointed out that the biggest gift that we all do share is love. Mm. And, Amen. and Christ made this made an emphasis that if you, you can you can obey it, to just obey his command and his command was to love one another. And he said that love out of all these gifts are like patience, kindness, you know, all of that. The greatest that of these. The greatest one was love. Amen. Right. And, and uh, I'm going to just briefly tell you a little story and then we can get into the gifts. 
because it's just going to be kind of pr uh, to preface it. Um, I was one of the people that didn't really think that speaking in tongues was a real thing. Okay? Mm. And I was talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. Pre, pre, pre following Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing was that I just remember seeing these televangelists who mm. were, who would have a piece of cloth and they would say, you know, it, uh, they would pray something into the cloth and then they'll say, send us a check for a thousand dollars and we'll send you this cloth and it's blessed. And they would speak, mm. I'm going to assume it out, you know, all this other stuff. Right. Mm. And to me, that was just like, wow. Like that's, you know, I can't believe that they're going through that extreme, right? I judged. I, I, I did. I really did. Yeah. A few weeks, a few days ago, I was sitting in prayer. Um, shout out to Linda who sent me this beautiful book called uh, Simply Pray. Oh. And it has an exercise of just extending your hands out mm -hmm. and sitting in a, in silence. And I did. And, you know, when you're, when you're sitting there and you're praying, um, I use this style if you want to call it a style i'm new so i can't believe that i have a style i can't even say that i have a style if i'm new to it right yeah but it was just like first of all thank you thank you for today today was challenging i thank for you for sure. that i don't i'm not here to ask you for anything but i'm going to extend my hand out and 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 i'm ready to receive whatever it is you want to give me mm -hmm. so my daily bread if you will mm -hmm. and i stayed quiet but my mind was not quiet my mind kept on trying to focus on something. It kept on trying to say, maybe we should ask for this. Nothing's happening. This is dumb, right? Stuff like that. Um, or look at you, silly, with your hands extended out in the air, right? With your <laughs> eyes closed, right? And and the moment that I stopped that noise, because it does take a moment sometimes, I kept repeating some phrases that I wasn't familiar with. Wow. Wow. But that in English, it felt like saying, I'm surrendering, like mm -hmm. I surrender. But it wasn't the words, I surrender. You know, it was it was something else. And 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 it just so happened that she was asleep, but she woke up and, and like interrupted that. Right. And so like I came back and I was like, w that was not really happening because like hmm. that, like I'm not that's not what I believe. That's not what I think. Like it's not yeah. that I it's not that I rejected it, but it, I, I I hadn't experienced it. Everybody who who had experienced it to that point, to that at that moment, till that moment, was just like I. They were not credible. You know, it was it, they, I just said sure. they they heard somebody speak and it's like what was the point to it, right? But for the first time ever, I experienced just a tiny little moment of it and i didn't reject it i just said okay that that happened right so let's get into the the the, the gifts mm -hmm. um and let's start with tongues you said you've never personally have have never spoken in tongues never um is that something that's available to everyone but only certain receive or is it something that is assigned to you is it what do you, what is your I stance think, on that? Yeah, I think that that, that one's like, <clears throat> you may not get a uh, open and shut answer, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's, it's Paul also says like, look, I, I can speak in a thousand tongues, but if no one, if no one's there to interpret, what good does it do? Mm -hmm. Right? So I know many who believe that tongues is, is um for your prayer closet. It's, 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 mm -hmm. it's your prayer language. It's exactly mm -hmm. what it is that you were experiencing where you're in solitude with God and, you know, this 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 language that you didn't know before is coming out. But you you felt what you were saying, even though you didn't know, like those words didn't exist to you. You still knew what the words meant. Right. Yeah. And and it's I think I think the stillness is something that um, I think like with anything over time, the more you pray, the more you allow yourself to be still in the presence of God, the the more that you these gifts will kind of manifest and i don't think that we're all going to get i don't think we're going to get all we got you know words of wisdom words of knowledge the, the gift of faith gift of healing like i don't think everyone's going to have the gift of laying hands and healing people or or working miracles prophesying everyone's not called to be a prophet so and all these are gifts of the spirit so i think it it, it it stinks when you don't receive a gift that you want because <laughs> it, it, because it, first of all, you want what you want. But secondly, you'd be like, oh, well, maybe I'm not doing it right. 
maybe I don't have enough faith. Maybe God is doesn't want me to have this gift because I'm I'm not ready for it. Or I think at the end of the day, even the gifts that we receive are for one reason: to glorify Jesus, mm. to edif to edify the church. We're and whenever whenever you see those gifts being used in a way that doesn't do those things, then you you, you can rightfully question mm. the the person that that is using the gift in that moment. Beautifully said, man. Um, I like that it circles back to something. I like that it circles back to that and to that to glorifying uh, the Father. Because think about it. Even if let's say you were praying for a revelation and you got it, let's mm -hmm. say you you got the revelation. You were like, God, show me a sign. Show me something. Reveal yourself. Um, when he does do that, it's not for you. It's for him, mm -hmm. so that you can be a better steward of what he's given you of the gifts he's given you uh so you can be more obedient to him mm. it's not so that you can be like oh look what i did no it's like wow look what you did mm -hmm. i'm more in love with you now than i was yesterday mm -hmm. i i i want to touch on that a little bit and agree with something you said earlier like where you because you said the voice of god you've you've heard you haven't heard the actual voice of god but you felt something that was the voice of god and i had that experience in my first surrender as an atheist i was actually i was actually calling myself an atheist and i was in i had a moment in the shower where i was just like just like, okay, fine. Like, I'm tired of fighting you. I'm tired. I know that you're there. You're obviously protecting me still. You're actually still looking out, out for me. So I know that you're there. I just don't want you to, to show me someone else. Don't bring me, don't send me a person. Don't. And it's not that I was, I wasn't saying it to like, to tell God, like, well, if you're real, show me this way. Be, yeah. be this yeah. specific. It wasn't that at all. It was yeah. just like, please, please, please. Like give me something real, something that is real for me. Not something that I can take to someone else and say, I know God's real because he did this for me, but just yeah. show me something that, that it comes from you. Like, I just want you. I want close. So I said, I, I give up. That, I didn't say specifically I surrender, but I said I yeah. give up, which is the same thing as surrender. For and sure. in my core, I felt a warm sensation and a mm. giant embrace. And I, I, I said I heard because it wasn't a voice, but in that warm feeling, something communicated that something deeper in me that said, "You're mine. Wow. You're mine." Mm -hmm. And and part of the conversation was when I call, you're going to, you, you need to answer. Um, but with the experience that I had the other night was sort of similar mm -hmm. where if I may say that, that it almost sounded like if it was maybe in another language so that the mind wouldn't understand. Wow. Does that make, does that make sense? It's yeah, like, no. I'm going to say this to you because it's understood in a deeper sense, because if I say it in English, the mind is going to intercept that. Mm -hmm. And then make something make something out of it. Ah, I speak in tongues. See, I have the gift, you know. And so yeah. to bypass that, it spoke to something that understood it in the language that it was that it understands. That is amazing. And I think I like what you said. When I call, you're going to answer. And okay. you can even you, you even said something about the you know he called you in the gas station, but you didn't answer. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's yeah. like sometimes it's like sometimes someone calls you and you don't answer, so they call your wife. Cause they know she's <laughs> with you. So like God called you, you're like, nah, I'm gonna let it go to voice. he's like, you know what? Let me call his daughter. <laughs> right quick. They and called it Luna. Right. He called you through her, which is so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, she can't even be like, no, I'm sorry. My dad's not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. That, that is beautiful. That is yeah, beautiful. So, so then, uh, please, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but continue with, with, with the gifts. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think that it would be awesome to have all the gifts. You know, I, I've actually asked God. I was asking God when my when my wife was pregnant with our daughter, I was asking him to give her uh, the gift of seeing in the spirit, of being able to, like, see the spirit realm, right? And my wife was like, yo, you better chill with that. He might <laughs> give, like, he might give you that. He might give it to you, right? But... The truth of the matter is this is, is if if I want it for her because of me, yeah, it's different than if I want it for her so that she could lead people to him. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. um, I found myself sometimes praying for things that I wanted selfishly so, yeah. and I didn't receive them. And I, I, I'll tell you a story about submission myself. I, I was serving at this amazing church um, here in Miami. They're called Voo Church. And. 
Um, they got one of those quote unquote celebrity pastors, man. The man is amazing. He's built community there, like in Miami, like, like, like crazy. And I've always been a hopeless romantic. Like I didn't have this modeled in my life. I, I never met my father. My mother was in jail till I was five. So I didn't know what a home looked like apart from my grandparents who raised me. But I always wanted a big family, a lot of kids, you know, the picket fence, all that that you dream of. And I remember walking in the courtyard of this church one day and I was like, God, you know my heart. You know what I want, but I'm done trying. I'm done trying to force this. If you want me alone for the rest of my life, then I'm going to serve you alone. If you want me with a wife, I'm going to serve you with a wife. So I'm done trying to force this thing. I'm going to let you kind of take over. And, you know, honestly, man, like I met my wife, mate, I, had, I already knew her when I prayed this and I started going to the same Bible study as her. And then we went on our first date and our first date was, bro, it was terrible. Look, I, I'm a coach. I told you this the other day. I was like, hey, let's go to the movie. She's like, perfect. I was like, I was like, hey, can you meet me there? She was like, uh, okay. I'm like, hey, I'm running late. Can you pay for the tickets? <laughs> <laughs> and then the movie we went to was A Quiet Place, right? It was like a scary movie. Yeah. And her sister, her family was like, yo, you need to run. Like, get away from this. This guy's not it. This guy met you there and you paid. Like, what are you doing? But... But after that first date, the, 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 the amazing, beautiful thing is that her and I both began to fast without knowing it. And we were fasting about whether or not God wanted the other for us. Mm. And as I, as I fasted, as I leaned in, as I prayed and I, and, I, and I let God speak, all I can hear him say was, yes, this is the one I have for you. And that's all she could hear. So long story short, here we are, married. She got pregnant on our wedding night. We had not been together, obviously. And, and our wedding night, God fulfilled the promise that he gave me while we were dating. And our, our daughter was supposed to be a boy. Her name was supposed to be Nehemiah. But but um, it was I who asked for that. So like, I'm praying for my wife. We're on the beach. And I'm saying, God, thank you for her. Thank you for her daughter, Nani. And I'm praying that you give us a family. And I'm praying that you give us a son. And you can name the son. And right then, in that non-audible, but in my heart, I, I got the name Nehemiah. And I said, okay, it's a boy. It's gonna, Nehemiah is a boy name. <laughs> and then the day before the gender reveal, a friend of mine calls me and says, hey, Tony, what if you have a girl and you name her Nia and her middle name Maya? And I was like, it was like at the end of Sixth Sense. <laughs> And you're like, wait a minute, Bruce Willis was dead this whole time? <laughs> oh, I, I haven't like, watched it yet, bro. Oh, uh, I haven't seen that movie. You, you haven't? Just spoiled, you just spoiled it for me. No, I'm no, kidding. I'm kidding. Oh I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, oh, I'm kidding. What? I'm kidding. So I'm kidding. I, 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 in that moment, I was like, oh, no, this could happen. And yeah. then she came out. We had a gender reveal. It was a girl. And we stayed faithful. It was God that gave me the name. It was me who gave him the gender. But we kept her name. <laughs> we kept her name Nehemiah. But I say that to say this. I don't believe in um, like the guy you said about the cloth, like send in your money and you'll be blessed. I, I, I believe that if God, I believe he, he desires to bless us. He desires to, to, to uh, provide for us, but I don't believe that he has to. And my faith isn't attached to whether he does or he doesn't. So whether or not God answers my prayers doesn't mean he loves me more or loves me less. The, the, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing I can do to make God love me more. And there's nothing I can do to make God love me less. He loves me just as he loves me. He does not change according to my actions, right? right, right. So I think it's very important for us as Christians to not attach our faith to the obvious blessings, but to attach our faith to the blessing that's already occurred. And that happened 2,000 years ago on the cross when Jesus died for you, for me, for everyone in here watching, for everyone not watching, that's the only blessing that we could ever even hope to receive, right? The good news is that he loves us so much, like a, like a really great parent, he wants to keep giving us stuff. <laughs> but, but I also believe that he's not going to give you something you're not ready to handle. Like, right. like a lot of times... We're holding on to all the stuff we got. We have no room for what God wants to give us anyways. Even if right. he gave it to us, it would be like, 
like Fred Flintstone with that rib on his car. It would just like <laughs> topple over. <laughs> Oh, I'm really glad you referenced Fr Fred Flintstone. <laughs> I mean, many people went up before the beard. They thought I kind of looked like Freddie Flint. Uh, yeah, man. Um, it's, I, I'm I'm in agreement with everything you just said. Um, mm. We we should we should uh, be thankful. It, it, earlier, when you said that when you were mentioning that, even if it reminded me, um, our good friend Matt. He. Uh, we need to talk soon, he said. I go for Matt. He loves, um, what was his name? Mercy Me, I think it is. Uh, yeah. And he has a song, Even If, I think it, I think it is, if. right? Even That's If, yeah. He was mentioned it. Yeah, he mm -hmm. mentioned it. Um, to have this even if mentality. And because it's not really up to us, it reminds me of a quote of that, I think it was Socrates who said, um, our blessings should not be, our blessings should be for, for, no, our prayers should be for blessings in general, for only God knows what is right for us. Amen. Right. So, and imagine like how many things you prayed for that you thank God you didn't get. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, like that girl you wanted to date, or that job you wanted, or this or that, where you're like, God, I really want this. This is a desire of my heart. And like you said earlier, the scripture says, like He will give you the desire of your heart. But but what we need to understand is He will give you the desire of your heart when your heart is in tune with His. Right. If your heart is a if your heart is opposed his will, then you're not going to get that. And sometimes, you know, he actually might give it to you just to let you like it's almost like sometimes he gives you just enough rope to hang yourself with so you can turn back. To <laughs> right. He's like, OK, this is what you want. Here you go. At the end of this, you're going to turn back to me even more so than you are right now. Yeah. Right. And right. I, I believe that I heard it said like this. In Paul's case, he had a revelation, right? And he turned to Christ. He was on his way to kill Christians. And, and, and on that road, you know, Jesus himself, you know, turned Paul away and turned him toward himself. So I believe that most people change. And you can you can attest to this or, or you can speak on this on one of two things that either they hit rock bottom or they have a revelation. Right. Mm -hmm. One of those two things usually have to occur. Now, this might sound harsh, but. I really believe this. If it takes you hitting rock bottom to accept Jesus Christ in your heart, then I'm trying to get you there. Let's go. <laughs> you know, like if I know that you're going to be saved in the end, I'm willing, like, let's, let's get, let's get there quicker rather than wait. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like the rock bottom or revelation kind of mentality is like, um, a lot of times that's what it takes. Either you need to have a like an epiphany or a word from God or a revelation of God, or you have to be your 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 resources have to be exhausted. You have to be the prodigal son in a pig pen eating <laughs> pig food to realize, like, yo, I can go be a worker for my father and have a bed to sleep on and food yeah. to eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um somebody was pointing out. Well, let me see. I wanted to take some questions, but I haven't seen a question in a good I while. I think someone said praying in the spirit is not the same. Speaking in tongues oh, is yeah, not yeah. the same as Yeah, that was, that was uh, Matt. Yeah. You want to touch on that? Yeah, I would say, like I said, I don't have, I don't have personal experience praying in tongues. But I do believe that when, when you're praying in the spirit, you're just like, it's almost as if what you said about when you, when you, had your hands out and that phrase came to you and you started to mutter it and then you knew what it meant even though you didn't know what it meant i think that when you pray in the spirit it's like you don't even have to think about what's being prayed mm -hmm. it's literally you are in tune with the holy spirit and you're praying uh the prayer that he wants for you in your mm -hmm. life and and i think even even this as far as like you're this is a posture of of you're about to receive something and in church, when, when we do this, when we raise our hands, I know a lot of people often ask, why do you raise your hands? It's because it's, it's a sign of surrender, right? We're, we're surrendering to God mm -hmm. and praying in the spirit and speaking in tongues is two different things. I wish I, I wish I was like, uh, like more educated on the differences of the two, but I would admit that I'm not. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of times, we, look, the truth is like, there's not a pastor on earth. John MacArthur himself, right. Who is like, 
like doctrinally really sound, theologically strong. Um, there's things that he misses. And I think as, as lovers of Jesus, it's our job. As, if we're trying to be more like him, it means that we're, we're, we're trying to learn more about him. We're trying to learn about his character. We're trying to learn about his gifts, about what they are and what they aren't, about what they're for and what they're not for. Mm -hmm. And m even with my ignorance in whatever aspect, I'm always doing my best to represent Jesus in a way that loves people and is truthful. And I think that a lot of times we get enamored with acceptance. Like if, 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 if you leave this interview, you're like, yo, that guy Tony's an idiot. I'm like, look, I'm like, look let's say that that happened. Or let's say someone watching or like someone that watched Wednesday that got upset that they said they had to leave because they couldn't hear what they were hearing. Look, I'm going to be wrong about some stuff. On, on theology and on doctrine here on, on, on this earth. But what I'm never going to do is not listen to what my convictions are from God. You know, and, and, and this is the this is a key is because I can be feeling something that God is convicting me to that he's actually not convicting me to. Right. It, it, it's like it's like what I said earlier about when we read scripture looking for an answer we already have in our mind. <laughs> We're trying. We want the scripture to affirm our belief yeah. instead of saying, hey, I'm opening this word and I am open to whatever you want it to tell me. Yeah. It's, it's a different it's a different way to approach. So there's things that I'm going to be wrong about here, mm -hmm. but I'm being faithful to what I feel and mm -hmm. believe God is telling me to do. And that's all I can do. I tell my youth group kids all the time and they don't like it. Mm. When let's say the topic of sex comes up and I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it until you get married. And that's most parents, like most children. I'll ask you two. It's just three of us in here. When you guys learned about sex, did you learn about it from your parents or from other something else? Definitely not. Something I else. learned about it from something else. So what, what is the parents main reason for not addressing that? It's usually to what preserve what innocence, right? We don't want right. uh, we, don't, we don't want our kids to have to learn about something before they need to learn about it. Yeah, but guess yeah, yeah. guess what? The devil ain't waiting for. The, kids, <laughs> the devil is not waiting for your kids to be ready. The yeah. devil is trying to get there before they're equipped, so that he can he can put the roots in. So now our job as parents become harder because now we got to uproot what the devil rooted and Ooh. then and then plant something different. So yeah, yeah, yeah. when I tell them, hey, you shouldn't have sex, and, then, and let me ask you this. When your parents told you don't have sex, when you asked them why, what was their answer? Just because don't I, do it. Because <laughs> I said so. so. Yeah, because yeah. I said so. Don't that do it. does not equip the, the person. Because I said so is not a good, even God, when he tells us to do things, he explains to it why yeah. he's doing it. <laughs> right? for, so in, like, in my case, like, it coming from a Catholic home, it was like, because God is watching everything yeah. that you do <laughs> and he doesn't want you to do that. <laughs> God is like, God is like Santa Claus. And, and like, <laughs> like he sees you when you're asleep. He knows, like yeah. he knows when you've been bad or good. So be good. Yeah. So you can get you know, presents. Like, that's funny. Cause it bothered me. I used to work at a front desk and, and when parents would come in and they couldn't control their kids, they were like jumping on the furniture and stuff. Instead of saying, instead of saying like, don't do that, it's not right. They would say, don't do that because the guy's going to get mad. He's going to give out. And I'm like, why do I have to be the bad one? Like, why can't you just educate your kids and tell them not yeah. to jump in the furniture? Because for <laughs> something else. Like, 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 like for me, my mom would have said, don't do that or else you're not getting croquetas later. And I'd be like, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. And I'm sad. <laughs> all right. But, but what I'm saying is this, like, like people don't want to, people don't want to feel conviction. When I tell my kids, Hey, you shouldn't have sex because actually God, designed it he has a plan for it and the plan is not to keep you from things the plan is to keep things from you right mm -hmm. and we were talking about generational curses when when men and women come together they don't just come together like i go get a frappuccino i don't give starbucks five bucks they give me the frap and we leave and and nothing changes when i come together with a woman when i separate she's there's stuff of her with me now and there's right. stuff of me with her and imagine if you've been with multiple partners, like you have generational curse and you have soul ties to people because the when God invented sex, he invented it to start and stop with one man and one woman. So when I tell my kids this, they're like, bro, you're, what do they call old people now? 
boomers. <laughs> you're like, come on, boomer. You don't know what you're doing. And I'm I'm sitting here like a like a parent should. I'm teaching them this because I don't want them to make the same mistakes that I made, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I'm trying to save them from them. From themselves, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right, right. So circling back to, to the Holy Spirit, <laughs> it's, it's interesting because we're like weaving, weaving this. Yeah, we're all, um, yeah. Now you said the important thing to look at is that, or to, the important thing to remember is that he is for, for us, right? He's, he's for us. He wants us the, the best for us. Um, in this com these conversations, I'm going to talk to a lot more people and I'm sure that sure. a lot of more people, a lot. a lot of different opinions, right? Or different difference, differences. Yeah. Moving forward, what would you say? How can how can I don't know? I don't know if this is the right language, but I hope that it's coming across the way that I want it to. How can the Holy Spirit be an? I know that we're the instrument, but how can the Holy Spirit be an instrument towards unity, to bringing people mm. together who think differently, who feel differently? That is um, because we live in such a divided culture, right? And I'm not even talking about like, let's just take Christians. Forget the rest of the world that's non-Christian. The Christian uh, in the world is as divided as they maybe have ever been. And so, like you said, we, we can go to one church and they'll teach, or you're gonna interview one guy and he's gonna say this about the Holy Spirit. And then the next guy might disagree with him on 10 out of 10 points, yeah. right? So then what does that do to the viewer, right? The viewer is like, well, both of these guys have the name pastor in front of their name. Mm -hmm. Which one's right? Mm -hmm. And I think with most things, people just in general, we're lazy. I mean, microwaves, ex <laughs> microwaves, ex like your grandmother, I don't know how old you are, but let's say your great grandmother, she probably made her own bread, bro. She like <laughs> made her own bread. Can you imagine making your own bread right now? Like it's not a thing. So <laughs> do you make your own bread? She, she's a baker. I'm so. a baker. <laughs> oh, let's go. So you got the generational <laughs> blessing of bread making. That's I've amazing. got I've got a I got a chocolate cake on the other room waiting, just waiting for me. <laughs> I'm gonna send you my address so you can send it down here. But oh, okay. um but the 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 thing is this, like we're not willing to do it for ourselves. Like I, yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. to a church, you can go to a church with a really amazing pastor who's really theologically and doctrinally sound. And if he's not asking you to a bring your Bible so that you can test and, and approve of what he's saying. And mm -hmm. if he's not telling you to yourself, like imagine if the only thing you knew about Jesus came from one man on a pulpit on Sundays, I don't think that's what God desires. I think he desires us to go like the only way we can see what's right and what's wrong is if we go learn it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the thing about the Holy Spirit, how can we use the Holy Spirit to 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 unite the church, the body? I think that we just need to be more willing. Like pride is what is what kills all of it, man. We 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 get prideful and we and we get dogmatic and we get like rooted in these secondary issues on what the Holy Spirit should and shouldn't do and what he can and can't do. And I think that th while those issues are, are, are important, they're not what bind us together. The blood of Christ is what binds us together. And when we allow the blood of Christ to wash over us, then we're like one body with separate functions, right? Like it, it's in there. It's like, you know, like the eyes don't walk, the legs don't see, like, each part of the body has a function, just like the gifts of the spirit. Each gift is given to the to the recipient to be a part of the function of the overall body. <laughs> so we shouldn't discredit people that don't have our gifts. Same. We shouldn't discredit people that have gifts that we feel may or may not be uh, dead now that they're not for today. We should just try to try to give people the benefit of the doubt that they are following after God's heart and they're being obedient to what God is telling them to do. And if there's a place where we disagree as the body now, I'm talking about Christian to Christian, mm -hmm. we're to go to those people and, and, and talk about our disagreements in a way that loves one another in a way that seeks to understand because there's a, there's a really big difference. And you said you used to be an atheist and I would even, 
I would even challenge that. I would say that most people that identify <laughs> as atheists probably aren't atheists as much as they're agnostics. Because if I asked your atheist version and I said, hey, of all the history of mankind, of all the information in the history of mankind, how much do you think you know? <laughs> your answer would probably be like less than a percent, right? Yep. So then I, my next question would be like, okay, so you being an intellect, in that 99%, is there not space for a God to possibly exist? <laughs> and your answer would almost have to be, yes, there is. Yeah. Right? So then you, you go from atheist to agnostic like that. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference when you're talking to someone. And it, it you're either talking to skeptical people, right, who don't believe but are open to belief, mm -hmm. right? Or yeah. you're talking to cynical people. <laughs> which doesn't, which it doesn't matter what evidence you provide, they're yeah. not going to believe no matter what. So we we also have to understand: Are we talking to someone who's skeptical? Healthy skepticism is great. Or are we talking to someone who's cynical? Who it doesn't matter what we say, they're just there to antagonize, to chastise, and they're not going to change their their position. Right, right. Having been on that end, um, I can definitely attest to that. It's it's. Once you've convinced yourself that there is no God, that all of it is silly, you can you could provide all the evidence you want. You're not going to change my mind because because yeah. I already see you a very specific way. And if I agree with you, then I'm going to be seen the way that I see you. And I don't like how I see you. And so I don't want to be that. But yeah. But you're absolutely right. I mean, I was like I tell people now, I was not, I wasn't even a good atheist because even as an atheist, I still believed. They still, I would yeah. still, you know, I'd go to a job yeah. interview and I'd say, like, hey, please let me let me get this job, please. I really need this job. It's like, who was I talking <laughs> to? I was an atheist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. sucked as an atheist. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing though. That's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Praise of course. God for that. Yeah. So, familia, um, I'm going to do something that we we just because uh, you you. you Sorry, I need to slow down. I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I love this conversation. First of all, thank you for having this conversation. Thank you for the love and respect that you're that you brought to the conversation, mm -hmm. um, and and your your input on on the topic. Um, familia, thank you also for keeping the live chat respectful and 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 I saw that some you didn't agree on some points and. And that's okay, and, and I'm glad. Yeah. If anyone, if anyone has an issue with anything that was said, please reach out to me. Um, yeah. Email me. Send me a note on Discord before you decide to leave. I I want to be able to to address whatever you're feeling or whatever you were thinking. Um, we're not here to agree or disagree or to uh, accept or reject. We're just listening. That's all we're doing here. You're still allowed to disagree. But, we, but I yeah. just at least before you, you know, hopefully no one's leaving, but before you decide that to leave, please give me the opportunity to have a conversation with you. Don't don't just, you know, cut it out and or cut everyone off um, and 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 not at least say just say your goodbye to me. Um, but here's what I'm going to do on on my channel. There's a community tab. Mm. I'm going to be posting a like a little like a little I'm going to put a post asking you what what you thought of today's conversation. And there you can agree or disagree. But I ask you this, if you disagree, please be open to the response that you're going to get from people. Okay. Please just at least just be open to it. Just try to understand what I want. What I want from this is for us to be united. I don't want mm. any division. This, this is the purpose to this is to unite each other. And I want uh, us to have a conversation more about what we have in common than what we're, what we have that's mm -hmm. different because what we have in common is that we're all following the same, uh, 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 the same person, the same uh, God, the same savior, the same Lord, same King, uh, however you want to phrase it, the same dad, the same, whatever. It's all pointing to that, to, to the same one. It's not pointing to a pastor. It's not pointing to a church. It's not pointing to yeah. an idea or an ideology or a practice or a religion mm -hmm. or, a, or, or a ritual. It is pointing back to God. And, and that's it. <laughs> so I don't know yeah. what, what else to say. But if, if right before we leave, uh, uh, Pastor Tony, if we could please talk about Jesus, Jesus's uh, prayer for believers at the end there of John, when he was praying, where first mm -hmm. he prayed for his disciples, yeah. and then at the end there, he 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 asked the Father. He said, "Not only do I pray for for them, but my prayer is also for the believers." Can you mm -hmm. can you just touch on that? I just want to hear your mm -hmm. opinion on on that, if you if we may. 
Yeah, I think um, the fact that Jesus prays for the for the body to be united, right, mm -hmm. uh, right. shows us his desire in his heart. And I know it breaks the heart of God when he sees his children so divided, right? Not walking in one accord. And I do think you said something important about disagreement. And I think healthy disagreement is actually very good. I don't, I don't, I don't think that we should be the type of people that never want conflict or never want confrontation. I think mm -hmm. confrontation, like when we look at it like this, right? I, I referenced earlier Paul and, and Mark going separate ways, right? Let's say they never went separate ways. Less people would have heard the gospel. You know, like, like Paul went this way, Mark went that way. Some of the stories that we get to hear may not have happened without that split. So who was right, Paul or Mark? Was it Paul who was like, look, you're either about the father's business or you're not. If you're not, peace, see you later. I'm about my father's business, I'm gonna go. And Mark was like, Barnabas was saying, hey, give the man a second chance. You know, his heart's after God. Paul was unwilling. He was acting in his conviction. Barnabas was acting in his. And they went their separate ways, and they were able to reach more people with the gifts that each of them had, right? <laughs> so I think it's very important when God is talking about unity in the body. I don't think he's talking about uniformity, so to speak. I don't think he's talking about everyone needs to look and act and talk and speak the same. I think what he's saying is that everything needs to point back to the cross and that it's it's finished. His last words, it is finished. Are those are those those words are yes and amen. That that Christ loved us so much that he would come down here. He would take on this flesh that we have on our bodies. He would know what sin feels like. He would know what all he would be turned to his people would turn their back on him, spit on him, beat him. And he would still willingly go to the cross and he went for the Baptists and he went for the Protestants and he went for the Presbyterians and the non-denominationals and, and, the, non went for, and, and, and the non believers that would come to, to, I mean, so we need to stop getting hung up on like, like these theological things that, that in the end of the day, they they are significant, but the 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 beginning and the end happened on the cross, and three days later when Jesus resurrected, and and if if we're just coming to people that we did look, I have a I'm always I'm a coach by trade, right? And the more I the more I learn in each sport that I'm coaching, the more I realize there's to learn, right? And, and, and I, I, the same thing goes with traveling. Like when I had never traveled before, there was maybe like one place I wanted to go to. And then I went there and then what happened? There's eight places I now want to go to. <laughs> and then I go to those eight places and now there's 80 places. So like the more I learn about God, the more I realize there's, the more there's to learn. And the more I realize like, wow, look, look, how much more is there for me to learn? So I, I would, I would pray that we would above all, be the type of Christians that accepted people as they were, lovingly walked them through repentance and, and turning their life over to Jesus. And whether we disagreed or not, like I want to be the kind of person that is outside of the abortion clinic praying for the woman that's walking in. And then she walks in, she has her abortion. And when she walks out, I want to be the guy praying for her as she walks out, letting her know that God has not turned his back that God still loves her, that God still has a plan for her, that it's not too late for her to turn to him. So I'm not so caught up with, with, with what people are doing. I'm more caught up with who's in their heart, who's in their spirit, who's directing their life. And I know that my sins have disqualified me from being able to sit here and say, oh, well, I, I, I'm good. I earned it. No, I haven't. <laughs> Christ, Christ did the work for me. So yeah. if we land on that, no matter who you are, Christ did the work for you. So so even if you disagree with someone, let Christ do the work in them because you can't do it. <laughs> only only he can. Mm. Mm. And, and that fit that fits into the anything you ask of me, I will give you, right? So even praying for somebody else's uh freedom 
of some kind of uh, lifestyle habit or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's really ultimately not up to you. you. You, your job is to ask for it and it's up to, it's up to the father, whether or not that is going to, to manifest itself in the way that, that, yeah. well, it's going to manifest itself in the way that it needs to manifest to glorify the father period. Amen. Um, right. So I think, I think you, you talked about, um, forgiveness and I remember that story where, that I believe she was a police officer. She walked into the wrong room, a wrong apartment, and she shot the guy that was living in it. And mm. she, she killed him in cold blood. This was recent. And then at, at, at the trial, the little brother of the man who had been shot said, I don't even want you to go to prison because I believe that God loves you and I believe God has a plan for you. And I believe that um, God's mercy is for you. And I think it's easy for us to accept God's mercy when it comes to the people that we love and ourselves. It's a lot harder to give God's mercy when it comes to people that have trespassed or done something against us. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, you're either all in or you're all out. There's no such thing as in the middle. The, <laughs> the lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. So what does it look like to be a non-lukewarm Christian? I mean, it... it, it when Jesus says the parable of the man who forgives the debts and he says one man owed a million bucks, the other guy owed ten dollars. The guy said both of your debts are forgiven. Who do you think's more grateful? Well, obviously, the guy that owed a million bucks, like he was like the, he was under the gun. So if we don't recognize just how much we've been forgiven, just how much mercy and grace has been shown to us, if we have this false sense that we're good, then how are we going to show mercy and grace to other people? And if you're a pastor out there or you're someone that's watching, and you're like, yo, there's some stuff that Tony said today that I disagree with. There's some stuff that Leo said that I disagree with. I want to know because guess what? I think the two scariest scriptures in all the Bible are the one that we talked about earlier where Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. But the other one for me in particular is when Jesus says, be careful those who want to teach because you'll be judged more harshly. Mm -hmm. So he's talking to me. <laughs> so he's like, yo, he's like, yo, you better make sure you're telling the truth because if you're not, I'm gonna deal with you later. So mm -hmm. I wanna be a truth teller and I wanna be someone who's open to correction. And I wanna be someone who's always willing to have a conversation, whether I agree or disagree with you without being afraid of offending one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said, man. Well, thank you for, thank you for your time. Man, I, love I you guys so much. Love you too. Um, it, it, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you. I just have one more question for you. Sorry, I know I keep saying one more question, one more question. No, no, question. go ahead. But uh, can you just really briefly like explain this to me? Oh, my Lord. Okay, so that's my cousin. <laughs> that's my cousin, Maria Luisa. Uh -huh. And uh, she's a dancer. So <laughs> she, she, she loved Maddie Ziegler. Um, Maddie Ziegler is the dancer that's in all the Sia movies, uh, Sia videos. Uh -huh. So I, I took her to, uh, I took her to her first concert ever. It was Justin Bieber. She fell asleep in my lap after song one. So, <laughs> so the Sia concert was the second concert I ever took her to, and that 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 wig was the wig that Sia wore. Yeah, so I yeah. I bought it for her, but I used it to take the photo. That's great. And man. um yeah, it was it was a pretty awesome night. She stayed awake for that one. Cool. <laughs> That's good. That's good, man. But th again, thanks a lot for your time, man. I uh, ap appreciate your 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 info so so much. Yeah. I hope I hope we can have you on the on here again soon to talk more. Well, but I, I can I ask you something before sure, before sure. we go? Would you sure, mind sure. If, if uh I prayed for you guys? Absolutely not. Go oh, go right ahead. Awesome. Okay, so well, what would you say your daughter's name was again? Uh, Luna, my Luna? I have two daughters, Luna, and the other one is Leia. Leia, Luna, and are we just all L's? Just, just two, yeah, we're all L's. Yeah. <laughs> and your wife's name again? It, it, it's Erica. She's, Erica? she's my girlfriend, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's Girl, okay. So, yeah, it's so okay. Leo, Luna, Erica, Erica, E, Erica, Erica, e, Erica. Er yeah, Liana, Le Le okay, <laughs> yeah, Leia. Well, God, thank you so much for uh, today. Thank you for this conversation. Lord, we pray that um, even the three of us who were, who were having this conversation, that we grew closer to you, that we grew more in love with you, that we grew deeper in dependence 
on you for everything that we need in our life, Lord. And I'm praying for Leo and his family. I'm praying for Erica, uh, for Luna and Leah, uh, the heart that you have given them, the, the, the heart that desires to please you, to 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 show people the light of the world that's living within them, God. I pray that you continue to expand their capacity, that you, that you continue to give uh, Leo this platform where people can come in and just listen to different perspectives about what it is that you mean, what it is that you say, what those commandments mean to us here today. How, how do we practically apply those? I'm praying for um, him and his family as they continue to just steward the gifts that you've given. I'm praying for uh, everyone listening, everyone who will listen, everyone who will um, join these in the future. I'm praying that you be glorified above everything. I'm praying that we get out of the way so that you may step to the forefront so that many can come to believe in you through even a YouTube channel, God. Uh, we love you so much, Lord, and we're so grateful. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Well, if you guys are if you guys are ever uh, in Miami, I would love to love my family to meet you. We go paddle boarding out here, get some good Cuban food. And um, if I'm in California, I'll, I'll hit you up so I can go. You yeah, can take yeah. me to in and out yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go right. man. Now, now i gotta take you to king taco man oh <laughs> king taco that sounds yeah, yeah. good king, let's go king taco is the king of tacos for sure He's the taco man over here. <laughs> yeah it, stick stick with me after after we we yeah let no you go here for just no a tiny little bit familia thank you all so much for joining us um i have a question of the day for you the question of the day is where has the holy spirit led you in your life please let us know in the comment section down below and also why is this thing not uh oh there it is special thanks to boiling point for sponsoring this this episode Ooh. familia we'd like to thank you so much for being here we like to remind you to please continue to spread the love that comes from above amen. and we'll amen. see you on our next adventure amen peace